Hello and welcome to today's Python tutorial for beginners. In today's tutorial, we are going to make a very cool English dictionary. Now, let's see what it is we are going to make by the end of this video. So, I'm going to run my program here. Now, I'm asked to enter a word. Let's enter a word like a raw, R-A-W. Press enter. This is a definition, so not altered from its natural state. And then there's also this example by D. Quincy. Now, what if the word is not there? I mean, what if it's a misspelled word? For example, let's uh, type something like um, rod, R-A-W-D, enter, not found, try one of these raw rad yod hmm that's interesting so when it doesn't find the exact match it suggests some words which are close so for example raw is has almost these well has these three letters and rad again the same and also yod so let's just go for yod i have no idea what that means so yod a jade an old horse or mare okay now what if so that was that was so cool right to to suggest some close matches so we're going to use um, diff lib module uh, for this kind of uh, functionality now what if it doesn't also find any matches there so for example if I just uh, type some gibberish here and then press enter word doesn't exist so it looks into the dictionary if it finds an exact match it will show the meaning if it doesn't find the exact match it will find for close matches and then displays those words so that we choose between the those words and if it doesn't find any close matches then it just tells us word doesn't exist Okay, that is what we're going to make today. So cool. I look forward to it. Okay. So, to start, um, we need a JSON file uh, that I just downloaded from GitHub repository of Matthew Reagan, and it's called uh, Webster's English Dictionary. So there is this dictionary underscore compact a JSON file that I am going to use. So I've downloaded this repository and then I've just extracted this and I'm using this one. And what this is, it's, uh, let me see, yeah. It's just a JSON file that is something like a Python dictionary, although it's a JavaScript object. So it's, uh, com it consists of uh, ca key value pairs, that is, there is one key here, that is the word, and then there is a value, which is the meaning of that word. There is this one, for instance, another word, and then there is the meaning, and so on and so forth. So, what you have here is all words and their meanings. So that is what you get. Now, when you download this, and I've put it here in this uh, folder which I have uh, created and that's basically it so let's see how we can use this file so the first thing we need to do is to import JSON because we're going to to use uh, JSON which is this uh, format here and then what we are going to do is to load JSON and read it. So I'm going to say JSON, JSON.load, and what is it that we are going to load? I want to use, I want to open uh, this file, dictionary, dictionary underscore compact. Um, that JSON and just because this is in the same directory I'm not going to specify any other directories here so I just <clears throat> use the name dictionary 
uh, underscore compact.json. Now we have this JSON file. We load it, we open it, and we are going to assign it to a variable, and we call that variable data. So now our data is basically whatever there is inside this file, and I just showed you what is there. So this is like hundreds of, yeah, tens of thousands of words in there. So we have access to all these words now. And remember, keys are the words and values are going to be the, the meaning. <clears throat> now, let's uh, print out the length of this data. Let's see how many items we have in there. So len data, and let's run our program. And here we have 102,000. 217 items inside that dictionary. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so now we know it exists. It's reading it, so it works. We just grabbed all the data there. Now, how do we get access to the to words and the meanings? So remember, if I say data and brackets key, it will give me the value. Now this is how I'm going to make it. So let's just say that word equals data and here let's just use a word like cat. And now we want to print word. Let's see if it gives us a definition. So I'm going to run the program. Now here we have the meaning of the word cat here. So an animal of various species of the genera, Felis. So that's it, so it works. So I could manage to grab the meaning of cat. Okay, that works pretty well. Now we have access to this, right? So what if I want the user now to type in something and then I would put that thing here. So I can say that I need the input of the user and get it, put it inside this variable. So let's say input, enter a word. And whatever word they enter, I'm going to put it inside word. And then I'm going to print what? I'm going to print data word. Yeah. So whatever the user inputs is going to be here inside word and then data that word that word. Okay, so let's see how that works. So let's clear this out. And let's run. Enter a word. Let's just say door, enter. Oh, look at that. It has a lot of meanings, huh? So that was for the cat. This one is for the door. So door, an opening in the wall of a house or of an apartment. Wow, so this works so far. So far, so good. But that is not it. What if the user uh, just Mm, let me see. What if the user types in something with capital letters? For example, the door this time could be something like this. Do we get the same results? Let's see. Oops. We are not getting the same results. Why? Because all the, f all the words inside this dictionary are all in lowercase letters. So we need to turn this input into lowercase. So we just add lower method to it and that should work. Now whatever we get from the user is turned into lowercase, all of it, and then we pass the data. Now if I do something, so if I, uh, let's uh, enter a word here, all in capital letters, now I got this mm -hmm. cat, it worked. Okay, so that was another problem that we just solved. Cool. Um, 
Now, what else do we need to do? Well, the thing is, what if the word does not exist? So, maybe there is just some word with misspellings in it, and we cannot find it in the dictionary. What then? Right? So, let's just uh, make a function. It's much better to have a function to do our the translation for us. So, I would say def, they define translate. Let's say x for now. So, let's define a function called a translate with an argument so that we can pass some parameters here. And what it's going to return is if if x that is whatever user enters inside this function if x in data so if that word exists in data we want to return um, the meaning of that word right so that was return um, data x right so we want to return this but what if it's not there else we want to return word doesn't exist so in double quotes because we have a single quote here so double quotes okay now we have this function so whatever we pass into the function is going to be checked to see if there is any data if it isn't data then it's going to get us a meaning if not now let's run the function and print so let's say print translate and translate what word why word and why not x well because word is what we get from the user right so we are passing in word okay let's save this let's check now enter a word enter a word okay let's uh, say fox yes awesome so we got all this definition for fox a carnivorous carnivorous animal of the genus vulpus yeah okay that and or even as a verb to intoxicate to stupefy with drink or to turn sour okay cool now our function works what if we enter a word which doesn't exist there so let's see so let's run it again and let's just say something random word doesn't exist cool so it works so far again but there are times that we mean to um, we, we do not exactly know the spelling of a word for example for fox well fox is easy but for some other words the spelling might be a bit different so we make we may make a bit of a mistake there what we just may miss one letter that sort of thing so we want to suggest to our users that hey maybe you meant these words so what how shall we do that and how can we get close matches okay that is what we are going to do with from diffLib so diffLib is a, a module in Python and we're going to import um, get close matches so from diffLib we're going to import get close matches so that is what we are going to get and then let me show you how this works so uh, this is the okay Okay, we can go and read the documentation actually. That's a good point to go to read the documentation. I have it here. So diffLib. So diffLib basically it's it's a module that provides class and function for comparing sequences. It can be used for example for comparing files and can produce information. So it's basically for comparing sequences of for example letters or characters or strings. Now we are going to use this one, get close matches and this is the way we use it so get close matches description it returns a list of the best good enough matches so word is a sequence for which close matches are desired 
Now, for example, uh, get close matches, and then we have this word. That is something that the user might type in instead of Apple or whatever they mean or they intend to, to put in. And then we kind of compare it against some possible words like ape, apple, peach, puppy. So which ones are closer? It gives us back apple and ape. See, so it tries to see with this about to, to look for similarities and then gives um, like the best match there is. And but how how what, what is the best match exactly? So that is what it means here, cutoff point. So a cutoff point is uh, is a actually a point between zero and one, and it's about the the degree of similarity between this word, the given word, and our list. So the default value is sixty percent. That is, if there is a similarity of sixty percent, it means it will give it uh, it will show it to you as a suggestion. For example, apple with this spelling and apple have more than 60% of similarity. So it's just like these two letters which are a bit uh, out of place. Or even ape and apple, they have three words in common out of two, four, five. So it means more than 60%, they match more than 60%. That is why it's going to suggest these two. So if we don't specify, this would be the default value. And also the default number that is, it will look into a list of, let's say, hundreds of thousands of words, and by default, it uh, suggests three words. You can also increase this number to five or ten or whatever. Now, let's see how we can use that. So, from, uh, yeah, we, so we in, just imported diff lib, and um, let me check. Yeah. And now we need to do something like this. We need to just, uh, let's just copy this. And let's take a look as well. So diffLib.get close matches. And inside we have the intended word that the user inputs. And then we have our list. And now what do you expect to see in the output? A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, definitely. A, C, D, uh, not a, yeah, this as well because A, C, D, three letters match. A, B, D, C, it also works. But D, C, B, A, it found it a bit odd. Although it was a close match, but by default, it gets like three matches, right? Okay, now let's go back and here. So let's just, uh, Okay, wait a bit. So, well, first of all, okay, this is a bit, uh, okay, so let's just declare a variable, let's call it possible, just for possible combinations. And diff lib, because we have imported this, so we don't need this one here. We can just go for get close matches. And so instead of this ABCD, uh, let me bring them all into one line. Yeah. So instead of this ABCD, we are going to use whatever word the user has input. So we say word. And also instead of this list, <clears throat> we have our own list, right? We have our data. But remember, our data consists of all the words and also the meanings. But we don't want the meanings to be here, the definitions. We just want the keys. So we say data. And this is a method in, in Python dot oops keys. So we get data dot keys as well. <clears throat> so we get the word and we get the word is not defined. Oh yeah, because it's uh, afterwards. So we can always yeah, let's just define it later. Okay. So we have the word that the user inputs, and we have our keys, that is the words themselves, not definitions. And remember, this n can be three, it's a default value, that is, it can suggest up to three words which are close to word. Uh, but if you don't, if you just leave it out, it means that, yeah, 
that's the default value anyways okay so what can well, what shall we do with the possible so if x is in data if word is in data then you should return it right that that's it but if x is not in data it means it might be a misspelling so we should look for possible so we can say elif and here we should return possible let's just uh, come yeah just add uh, elif oops sorry elif x elif x um, yeah elif x not in data we can also do that or we can also use possible here so for example we can say if the length of possible uh, is greater than zero so if the length of possible is greater that is if there are some words here for which are close to x now we should return those words so so we hmm, okay so this time we should say uh yeah actually we should have the this the new word here let's say the new words are yeah because i'm thinking if we just uh, return something then we should actually give some opportunity for to the user to input something back that is choose between those words so we can say new word now let's go for an input and the input should be um, like an f string because we are going to use possible so um, word not found try these and by try these we need to pass in possible and then some space and yeah so that okay I think it might be good now yeah okay and uh, let's also turn this into lower as well and return new word anyways so actually we could also return it here but uh, yeah oh not the new word but data that new word data new word because oh yeah because here we are going to give the person these possibilities and whatever like for example there are three possibilities for example there and then they choose one possibility and they write it down for example they say cat I choose cat out of these three and cat is a new word so now we should say the data cat now give the definition of cat then okay yeah yeah it's still a bit complicated <laughs> for me as well too uh, okay well that's a learning opportunity right now else let's say that it's not either so there is no um, close matches or yeah it's not all doesn't exist here in data then we should just at the end return like uh, the word doesn't exist that's the last thing okay hopefully I think it works okay let's uh, try this let's run this first now enter a word so let's go with the right words so just like raw okay not altered from its natural okay that is a meaning and an example okay cool now let's go with another uh, word which uh, we just tried before rod aha uh -huh. cool so it's working word not found try these 
raw rad yard let's go with rad this time rad is uh what's that it is imperative i guess or pass participle of read read spencer oops i have no idea what that means but okay so it, it works okay let's try it again with something that doesn't exist there something super random like that a word doesn't exist cool so we have completed this now let's go over the code again one one more time and let's see what we just did so first of all we imported json why because we wanted to read this dictionary that we downloaded which is in json format and that json format had key value pairs that in, that is word definition so here we just said data json.load so we just loaded this opened it the dictionary and put every uh, bit of information in it inside this variable so we stored this thing inside data so data now consists of all the words and definitions now we asked the user for an input and we turned it into lowercase because that is the, the format our J json words are and then we also okay let's uh, skip this part first and then we define the function so that it takes an argument like a word and then looks for the word in our data if the word is in data it returns data x data the word so when it's data key it gives you the value that is data word gives you the definition and let's also skip this part first and then we printed this function now we thought what if a user has made some spelling mistakes in there so let's get the closest matches to that word that's why we imported get close matches from diffLib module just to get close matches between different strings then we made a, a uh, variable called possible to get close matches between the word that the user types and the data keys that the keys the words in our data not the not the definitions but to the entries let's say so if the word exists in data then this happens the meaning is given but if the length of the possible this one is more than zero and why should it be more than zero because if there is a close match even one it means that the word has not been found in data if the word had been found in data then there wouldn't have been any need for this to go and look for close matches so if the word exists this will fire up if not it will look for possible choices and if it finds any possible choices it asks the user to choose between them and type them here and then when it types and enters we just give the meaning of the new word and else we say the word doesn't exist so that was our dictionary how did you like that thank you for watching and listening